Today, I want to share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly of dropshipping. If you haven't already checked out my dropshipping basics video, please do so as it's a great introduction to what dropshipping is all about and why it's a business model that you might want to consider yourself. So basically as a quick review, the benefits of having a drop shipping model are you don't have to create the product. You don't have to design it, manufacture it, package it, label it, ship it, stock it. You don't have to do any of those things. You just have to find the product that you want to sell and market it to customers, collect the orders, send the orders to your third party, and then have the third party with that product ship directly to those customers. That's why I got into it uh, and gave it a try. Um, just to show you actually what my drop shipping business was, was I had a business selling boutique style uh, dog collars and other pet products as well. But this was one of the main selling products that we had on our website. So what I did is I found somebody who was making the collars that was willing to um, do drop shipping for me. And essentially we worked out a price. I also got them to do what's called like white label or private label them where they put a leather label on that had my brand name making those colors like more unique to me and to my brand. I essentially set up a website where I added the colors to the website and uh, I created it in Shopify, which is a fantastic, honestly, like website storefront if you've never used it before it's amazing and incredibly user friendly i used to design websites actually way back in the day and honestly shopify is like totally the way to go but um so i created the website and then what i did is started an instagram account i figured it was a good cheap way to kick off the business and test it out and um see how it would do so i started an Instagram account under my brand name and started to grow a following, engaging with customers. I'm actually going to have a separate video on that because I was able to grow the following, actually with the help of my husband as well too, to a huge following in a very short period of time. So I'll have lots of great tips and tricks on how to do that. Essentially, it was a great business. However, I did learn and learn the hard way because I find nobody shares these things with you in advance. Everybody just wants to make it sound like, oh, drop shipping's like amazing and you're gonna make tons of tons money and it's so easy and all you gotta do is find the right product and oh woo like you're gonna make sales galore and um you know not have any glitches and problems along the way so i did learn <laughs> there were certainly a few things about drop shipping that uh you really should know in advance that will cause your drop shipping business to um have many many challenges and possibly even fail and or <laughs> make it so that you want to give up the drop shipping business scenario. <laughs> so essentially, it kind of turns out that all the things that make a drop shipping business model a great business model are actually things that can really cause it to be a terrible business model. <laughs> essentially, because everything is more or less out of your hands aside from the marketing itself, it leaves lots of room for errors that you have essentially no control over. So in my case, with our collar business, um, you know, despite the fact that we actually did in fact order a collar in advance so we could check out the quality of it, we really couldn't ensure the quality to each and every customer. I mean, we certainly assumed and hoped that it would be the same, but we didn't know because we didn't handle each product before it went out the door. We didn't make the product. We didn't physically touch them. Um, so that certainly was an issue. We had not really complaints about the quality of it. We did have some complaints about how the label itself was stitched on, crooked and in weird spots and so on and so forth. As well, the other thing is where you're not physically placing the product in a package and shipping it, you also are relying on somebody else to do that. So if they're not placing them in the box and shipping them out when they're supposed to, then that shipping time can go from three to four weeks to possibly like five to eight weeks. And let me tell you, if you have a customer who's expecting their order in like 30 days and they don't get it for 60 days, they're not happy. And when it comes to drop shipping, 
the complaint goes to you and you've got to do something about it because let me tell you, you want to keep the customer happy because if they're not happy, they're not going to be referring their friends or family. They're not going to be sharing it on social media. So basically that often leads to a full refund. They get to keep the product and you've refunded their money and essentially you're actually in the red for it. So that's one of the things that can happen. The other thing is if they're not happy with the quality of the product, then essentially, again, they can't return it to the third party person because they're not going to be shipping it overseas to China or some other place. It's just not worth it. Um, then basically, again, you're going to be replacing the product out of your own pocket and having it shipped to them as well, which did happen, I think once or twice. The other thing was we did have some people who were supposed to have had their product shipped somehow it got lost. Honestly, like when you're dealing with companies that are overseas, that don't speak the language, aren't in the same time zone as you, you can't just simply talk to them on the phone. You rely on messaging, you rely on email, and there can be quite a time delay in communication. And you also find out that an order that you've placed has just totally disappeared. <laughs> then guess what? Your customer is also not going to be happy when they should have had it arrive and it hasn't even departed from the manufacturer that you're dealing with. So in that case, we did have that happen a couple of times as well. And we essentially ended up trying to smooth things over by not only sending them the product that they were supposed to have, but we also got our drop shipper to include some of the other products that they had available uh, in each package as like a bonus product, just simply as like an apology and um, a hope that they would be a happy customer and continue to buy again. Okay, so another challenge with drop shipping is that since the product that you're selling, you didn't create it, make it, and you certainly don't own it, is that it's available for other people to purchase through that third party, um, either for themselves or to do the exact same thing as you and uh, set it up as a drop shipping business and they can certainly sell it to their customers as well. And why this becomes a problem is because you may find out that it's easier than you think for your customers to come across somebody else selling an identical product to yours and they may see it for an even better deal or rate than you're selling it for. And when you get into a position of having a price war with somebody else or multiple people selling the same product, it is a long, hard battle to fight. And basically, you know, you're just going to end up losing out in the end or essentially making next to no profit for a lot of work involved. So that is something else to keep in mind. Basically, you need to find a product that's either not really readily available out there or in a very specific niche um, that you can, again, private or white label. And even still, there's certainly no guarantees that by private labeling or white labeling that there won't be any competition out there selling the exact same product. So it's certainly something that you want to keep in mind when choosing what product you're going to sell and just be aware that most likely people are going to find the same exact product available from somebody else. So you got to really figure out how to differentiate your business or your brand or your price point. So there are a lot of things like that that can come up that you don't necessarily realize and or think of or nobody tells you. And when it comes up, it can be a customer service nightmare. <laughs> so um, I think the thing for me was after a number of those scenarios and realizing that as much as I didn't want to stock products uh, and ship them out myself because that certainly adds a lot more work and I definitely was not going to be sitting down sewing dog collars or anything like that. That is like, that was nothing I was at all interested in. It just would not have made it worth the while. Um, I had just gotten fed up enough and realized that not having control over a few of those things uh, really just was not going to work for me. So in the end, dropshipping wasn't for me. It's not to say that dropshipping doesn't work. Uh, it certainly does and there's obviously lots of people out there who are making lots of money off of it. But again, those are the same people who probably got lucky or spent a ton of money on advertising, which is, as you know, always a risk because it's hard to tell exactly what the return is going to be. and 
Honestly, if it works for them and works for you, by all means, that's amazing, but it just was not the right business model for me. So I'm hoping this video helps you if it's something that you're interested in doing just to give you a heads up on some of the things that might cause your dropshipping business to fail and or certainly to be a uh, super frustrating, wanna pull your hair out kind of <laughs> business model, then, uh, Please let me know if there's anything else that you want to know about with regards to drop shipping and in particular what might cause it to be a headache. Just comment below and if you like this video please click like and subscribe as well for more great videos like this one about other ways that you can make money. Thanks again for tuning in.